You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here with Eric Ray, known for his work with Metal As Medicine. Check out metalasmedicine.com, everybody. Eric, thanks for taking time to talk to me, and welcome to The Pit. Hey, perfect. Thanks a lot for having me here. This is fantastic. I really appreciate this opportunity. Of course, I had to reach out to you because, you know, we're brothers in metal and we're in BC and, you know, we all got to know each other. So I want to know more about how you got into it, though. Like growing up, uh, did you grow up in BC and how did you discover your passion for metal? Uh, yeah, so I grew up in British Columbia in the Okanagan, like the lower mainland, and then uh, moved to the Okanagan uh, before probably around turning uh into my teenage years, uh, and I discovered metal in mi- middle or high school. Uh, Rammstein was the first band that I got into when they were on the Lost Highway soundtrack, I believe, around '97. And from there, it just took over. Like metal is just for musically, mes- metal has just consumed my life. And the genres have grown over the years. All the subgenres that like I feel like I can explore metal my entire life and never get bored of it. Um, I had spent a lot of time though in the '90s exploring in the early 2000s exploring like uh, all of the Scandinavian metal bands uh, because over in Europe it was really booming in the late 90s and early 2000s we're out here in North America like new metal and thrash metal were kind of taking off and were a thing but we didn't have more of that death and melodic death metal of course like the, the death metal movement down in Florida and whatnot but I felt like the real spirit and heart of it came out of Europe uh, and then I actually moved to Europe for a number of years and lived in Finland uh, where I was associated with a number of um, uh, acts and, and playing and recording music myself. And uh, when I moved back to uh, Canada in about 2011, there was a little bit of a buzz and the, the music and metal scene was kind of just starting to happen. And when I started exploring all the bands in British Columbia, I thought, you know, like there, there needs to be more publicity here. We need to like build something bigger to give a platform for these uh these metal bands and like because we've got even just in Kelowna here in the Okanagan and then the lower mainland is just uh incredible the amount of uh, talent that we have and and just not a lot of people know that out here in western Canada we have such a a banging scene and, and lots of people involved with all sorts of skills that we are uh are trying to bring together and that must have been a, a total uh, culture shock coming back from Finland and then coming seeing how we support our artists over here. I was just talking to James Lascelles from uh, the band Wheel a little while ago, and we were talking about Helsinki is probably one of the most metal cities on the planet. And it's like everybody's in the metal band and everybody knows everybody. And so to come here and see that there are so many artists around here, we just aren't connected. Yeah, and like I had, I, I lived in Helsinki for a couple of years, and I would be literally on the train going to work, and there would be dudes with like wearing a Molnir necklaces and long hair and tattoos, and in business suits going to work, and you can you know right away that they're metalheads, and you go to the the metal bar, and everybody knows everybody and everybody is part of a metal band and you could be like oh there's p3 lindros from and Sephirum. oh and there's a dude from kelma and we're all just sitting here having beers and then i come back here and yeah like you go to the bar and there's like a couple of people that are associated with bands or whatnot but that that connectivity and that whole like being part of the scene and the culture has only really come together in the last few years yeah. So when you came back to Canada and you saw that, is that kind of where you got the idea to like, how did, how did metal as medicine begin? Uh, so I, 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 I'm on the internet all the time, like literally 24 hours a day, I'm doing something on computers or involving the internet and computers. And, uh, I'm really big into where the internet's heading to and where, uh, where, what, what it is evolving into and where, where society is heading using technology. And I, I mean, I'm into audio podcasts and I listen to a lot of them ranging from, uh, from, from music to movies to pop culture to cryptocurrencies to like everything. And so I was listening to it going to, to a few that I listened to, like uh, Anthony Pomp is one that I listen to quite regular and going like, you know what? I think we need something like this here where we can connect people from around the world with what we have happening in Kelowna and in the Okanagan and in British Columbia and in Western Canada. And so I just had an idea and in my office and was like, you know what, I think I'm going to try building it out and see what happens. And what we're doing now is what I had envisioned 
three years ago and I'm just taking every single step of the way figuring out how to perfect the next step, how to perfect the next thing that we're doing, the next episode, every episode we do, how can we do better from the last episode instead of building a format and then just staying with that, we're seeing what we can evolve into and where we can take people with us and where we can take the music with us as we move along. And, and part of that evolution was coming into doing live streams of, of performances, which is amazing and especially uh, really important right now. So how did you break into that? Uh, so the, the idea was to start off with an idea with, with uh, one, one aspect of the live streaming. And this isn't a bandwagon that we jumped on going, oh, there's a pandemic. We need to find a way to, to put music out there. Uh, if we go back into all the idea logs and all the planning that I've done, I've got timestamps saying that I've been planning live streaming for a number of years and finding a way to, to blend in multiple types of media into one way and every skill that I've learned along the way of years of using the internet and, and perfecting it down to anybody can just point a camera at a, at a, a stage and hit play, but what else could we do to add every kind of element to it from anything, any, any, any type of media out there. So we're always exploring all the different aspects that we can to try and build something new because live streaming is something that is there, something that's available, but it's kind of like this amorphous thing on the internet that people are trying to figure out where it fits in with content creation. And I feel like it's going to take um, many brains coming together and, 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 and like this may not even be the final form. What we're doing, creating now may be just the beginning of where it's heading to and maybe nobody even knows where it's heading to. That you, it sounds like you're a big picture kind of a guy. Yes, I am. Yeah, I've, I, I have a there's, a, there's a big picture and there's a, a, a method to all the madness. And, and we only have, like, I, I work a full-time job outside of this. So I basically have two full-time jobs building this. But it's, uh, it's something that's coming together and we're always trying to be a step ahead of anybody else, but also heading towards the end picture that we have in mind. I uh, I think this is also a special thing cuz like it seems to be that there's a lack of venues and you might actually be able to start the interest in people going to shows again and maybe the venues will start to open up back I mean after once it's safe and everything but like it seems like for a long time people just didn't care about going to shows and you know yeah. and now I feel like maybe after all this is over we're all just going to be starving for some live ev entertainment well, the idea is to is to find that bridge between people getting up and going to shows and being involved in a, in a scene because it's so easy to sit back and just consume content on your on your screen, whatever screen it is that you're looking at or using, but to actually go to the show, be involved, even even to be to be felt welcomed to go to shows because people will go to shows and be strangers and be like I don't know who anybody is and there's 50 people that all know each other and I'm the odd one out and it's kind of the same as like you know walking into a locker room for a hockey for a hockey team and being the new player with everybody else that's already meshed together so we're trying to build this connect connection between yeah, you like the live music, you like watching a band, you want to see bands play, but then there's this community that you don't feel connected to. So we're bringing in elements so that people can see who we are, see how our, our uh, personalities, what we bring. We want to just bring positivity and energy and have people feel welcomed and know that, hey, we need what we need more now in this world than ever is to feel welcomed and to have a sense of community and bring people in and welcome them. And if we can do that now during the pandemic and have people view us no matter where they are in the world, we may be able to start bridging that into people coming in and feeling more welcome to the shows. I love the fact that you're bringing up community so much because I think, you know, metal is, as a genre, it's one of the reasons why I fell in love with it is because I felt like I was a part of something bigger than myself and it's this big global community. But I feel like that's kind of, we kind of lost that over a couple of years. Like everyone's been kind of going into their own niche things. And even if I show up to a concert wearing the band's t-shirt, I don't really feel all the time like I'm able to approach everybody there at the show. And maybe doing things like this online is going to change how people interact in the real world. Because have you, have you, how, how have you tried to figure out how to like 
for the audience coming in and watching a live stream, there's going to be ways for them to like chat or like send questions to the band or stuff like that so that they're just more involved. Yeah, like the, the, the we we try to include the viewers for for the live streaming the viewers and encourage the chat room, encourage the questions. The chat room is live on our screen. If you've seen our first episode and our our second one is going to be uh, live stream tomorrow evening, and you'll see that the the fans and the viewers are their 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 names appear on the screen. The word the words that they say, their emojis, everything that they they. Play, they they want to say is going to appear on the screen, so they're already going to have that connection. We're gonna, you know, we thank people for watching the stream. We'll call out band names or fan names as they appear or they become regular viewers of our show. So when they come to the to the uh, venue and see us in the venue, then they have that personal connection already, and that's kind of brings the whole social media into play, where you you can interact with bands and you've got band members that you know have their own social media accounts as personal or as bands. And then you have like bands and band members that take over uh, social media accounts for like, you know, metal sucks or whatever. And then you can actually interact with them. And now you've got this sense of, of uh, a personal sense of like, yeah, not only do I like the band and the music, but now I can connect with them. And now I know that these people are fans as well. So all of a sudden, like you said, you're in this massive community that metal is in every country of the world. Every single country has metal where every other, other genre of music is not in every country of the world. So you have this global community where now you can say, hey, I'm a metalhead. You're a metalhead. We both like, you know, uh, Blackwater Burial or uh, Apollyon or whatever. And then all of a sudden you're friends and you can put all the differences aside because you have that personal connection already. You just named two great bands, by the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you, what do you see on the horizon for Metal as Medicine? Um, I, well, we, we were, uh, putting on shows at Moonen's Post, which sadly closed, um, just before the pandemic started. And so we're in the air right now as to what we're doing. And we have our, we, we do have our own studio right now where we're pushing ahead with the shows. Uh, we, we don't have, uh, a crowd like, um, uh, viewers in person, obviously, because of the pandemic, we can't, and our studio is small. So we're hoping that eventually we can pick up some steam and, and like a following online so that uh, we do get noticed and say, hey, maybe your operations should be in a larger venue where then we can bring the global scene in and bring people in as well to watch this, what's going on. Because when we when we're practicing our show, because we've been practicing for months before we did our first episode, and then when we do our episodes and we've got our tech crew, uh, our sorry, our tech team here watching it, they're just like, I can't believe this. This is insane watching this. Like, not only are we watching live music, but we're watching you guys stream it online, and you're bringing in elements of like Twitch streaming or like gaming streaming into this into this thing, and the energy is is amazing, and it has like this this unique feel where you're like, yeah, I love watching the live show with the lights and the smoke and, and the music. And then you've got this like weird element that is also really exciting to watch, even though I may not be watching it on a screen, but it's really, <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, but it's, it is definitely something else to see happen. I need to ask you uh, just any advice that you'd have for anyone out there who's just trying to chase their dreams, regardless of what they're doing, if they're a musician or trying to, you know, do live streaming like you do or just anything like any advice that you'd have for anyone like that? Uh, Don't give up. Absolutely. Practice hard. A hundred percent. Positive attitude is huge. Surround yourself by good people that understand what you're doing and respect what you're doing. Uh, we we encourage everybody that we work with, that we partner up with, that we bring on board and say, you know, we totally respect everybody's ideas and what everybody's doing. And like, uh, if 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 you have a plan and 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 you want to stick with it just do it because there's there's with technology and the ability to learn new skills like it's nothing then it's the uh, room for evolvement uh sorry the, the the room for evolving and for uh growing your skills is just limitless is there anything else that you'd like to say to our listeners uh yeah check out uh so our website metalismedicine.com is um is in the works right now we're more focusing on our live stream so the website is kind of uh 
a little bit uh, dated right now, but uh, definitely follow us on YouTube, Twitch, uh, Facebook, and then uh, we've also on Twitter, and then we have a, a Reddit community as well. And just follow us and see what we're doing because all we're doing is just spreading the good word of metal for real, like from British Columbia, and we are so fired up about what we're doing, and we think that we're on to something big here. It's, I think you're on to something big too. <laughs> There's just so much talent. <laughs> It's un- so much untapped talent in this country that it, we just need to tap into. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And it just, it really just takes like a, uh, like a new, a new look on, on different, on old ideas and just a twist on them with technology to, to make something new and exciting. Before I let you go too, let's uh, plug what's happening tomorrow night. So Eden Echo, you're going to be live streaming them tomorrow at 6 p.m.? Yeah, so 6 p.m. we will be streaming a uh, local heavy prog metal band, uh, Eden Echo. Awesome guys. They've got great energy, and they've got a big following here in Kelowna. And uh, the live stream will be at 6 p.m., and we're just going to switch the format up a little bit as to from our first episode just to test new waters and see how things go because we're always open for uh, you know uh, feedback, uh, constructive criticism, and like just join the chat and just – start chatting away and like we we love seeing all the engagement and everything and like it's yeah i say just keep following us because we're on we're we're doing some really cool things thanks so much for taking time to talk to me and uh hopefully we will talk again soon in the future i'm sure we will thanks a lot derek i really appreciate it